a lot of people are surprised when they start guitar that chords can actually be pretty frustrating because you're gonna start and you're gonna be really slow to change between them and you're gonna find you have a whole ton of buzzing notes. You have muted strings. It's really hard to memorize the chords a lot of times. And that makes people find it a lot more difficult than they thought when they initially set out. But the good thing is this is completely normal and it's something that everyone deals with when they first start. And after just a few weeks of working on them and practicing and learning just a few chords, then you can start to do a lot more with that. And you can start to play some songs and get some things under your belt and then everything will start to work a lot smoother. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here today. I'm going to show you how to play your chords without muting and buzzing, how to go about learning new ones and getting them up to speed so that you can actually switch smoothly in time and just play nice beautiful chords so you can start doing what you tried to do when you started playing guitar, play songs. In this video I'm going to give you the only two exercises that you need to be able to change chords quickly and play them smoothly without buzzing. So that's what we're going to go through in this video, so stay tuned, and if you watch through the end of this video, you're going to find out exactly how to do just that. So quickly to begin, there are seven chords that you want to know. To make it simple, chords are named with the first seven letters of the alphabet, so A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. All these chords also have a minor version, so A minor, B minor, C minor, and so on. The biggest difference is minor chords just kind of sound sadder. So G is a happy chord. And then G minor is a lot sadder. Some of these chords are harder to play than others, so typically when we're beginning, we start with A, A minor, B minor, C, D, E, E minor, F, and G. So originally I said seven chords, and if you're really new to guitar, you should skip F and B minor, as they're a lot tougher than the other ones, but I left them in there for those of you that are ready for a couple new chords. Basically, if you get these chords down, then you'll be able to play a ton of songs. Most songs actually use just these chords. So what I recommend, it's probably going to take you a few weeks to memorize all these chord shapes, but at the start of each day before you play, just try playing each of these chords in alphabetical order. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And remember that for A, you have A and A minor, and E, you have E and E minor. All right, so with that, let's get into some exercises on how we're gonna work on learning these chords and switching between them smoothly. So as I said earlier, there are only two exercises that you need to be able to switch chords smoothly and quickly. And those two exercises are individually picked chords and metronome strumming. So let's get into it with the first one. Okay, so in the first exercise here, so we're gonna set up an A minor chord and counterintuitively, we're not going to strum it. We're gonna pick out each of the strings individually. And the point of this is that you can very quickly hear which of your strings are buzzing. So if I've got a buzzing string there, then I realize that the fourth string is what's pro giving me my problem. So you can take this finger and readjust it and play it again until it's ringing out smoothly. So then you find that, oh, now this, uh, this third string here, that's the one that's buzzing. So you can pay attention to this finger specifically and then readjust it until you can play it and it's smooth. And you're gonna find very quickly which positions cause you trouble and give you buzz notes or mutes. And those are the two things that you're gonna run into is if you're not quite in the right position, it's gonna buzz and one of your fingers can block the string below, which is gonna give you a mute. So all you gotta do is just readjust, find a position that works. It's gonna be a little bit different for everybody. Some people have smaller hands, some people have bigger hands. You can learn no matter what, it's just your positioning is gonna be slightly different for you. But you just gonna wanna be patient and try really slowly until you can get a nice smooth ringing out chord. So you're gonna try that on an A minor and then I want you to try switching with an E minor, because it's another easy chord. And that's all you're doing, is just picking each string individually. So if you've got a buzz, just fiddle with it for a while, find a position that works, and then continue on. And your goal is to do something like this.
So that's what that exercise sounds like, switching between A minor and E minor. Do that for now, and you can do this with any chords. And the key here is just be patient, go slow, figure out how to get a nice smooth chord. We'll work on speeding them up later. For now, we want smooth bringing out chords. And that's all there is for this exercise. You can start with just A minor to E minor, but once you've done that for a few days, then try adding in different chords, C, G, D, all of them, and work on just these individually picked notes and trying to make these chords just ring out smoothly and nicely just on their own. And guys, just be aware here that if you are brand new to guitar, it is gonna take you a few weeks before these are ringing out smoothly. They're just gonna buzz at the beginning. Don't be too concerned. But over time, you'll get calluses on your fingers, which will make the hand pain go away and your fingers won't hurt so much, and it'll just be easier to hit the, the uh, strings in the right spot and get the right positioning. So you will get used to it. Be patient. This is going to take you a few weeks. It's not gonna be, so it's not gonna be perfect on the get-go, but don't worry, that doesn't matter. You don't need perfect chords to sound good, and that's what brings us into the next exercise. We interrupt this video to bring you a surprise giveaway by today's video sponsor, which is Deplike. Guitar pedals are really cool, but each of these is gonna cost 50 to $200 or more. If you want different sounds, you have to get multiple of them, link them all together, put them on a board, and then lug that all around. Deplike solves this by putting it all in your phone, so you just need your single app to replace hundreds of different guitar pedals. A lot of acoustic players especially don't really realize how useful pedals can be. In every single performance I've ever released on YouTube, I've got different effects on my guitar to make it sound fuller, to make it sound more interesting, and make the sound more unique. So this is super simple. I've just got the audio interface plugged into the phone, and then the white cable goes to the guitar, black cable goes to the amp. And then on the app itself, I've just got my effects chain here. It's got a few basic amps, but the main points here that I've got are the delay and then a simple reverb. And that's about all that there is to this tone, but they have tons of different effects that you can add and play around with. With one app, you can replace a big pile of pedals that you'd have to buy and then hook up instead. So first you can hear what it sounds like with no effects, just plugged into the amp. And then you turn on the effects, and suddenly... So you can see how easy it is to get really cool sounds on your guitar. It's a ton of fun to play around with, so try it out for free by clicking on the link in the description below this video. You can get it on your iPhone, your iPad, your Mac, and your PC. There is an Android app, it's still in development, so we're hoping to see a little bit better support for it in the near future. Oh yeah, and I mentioned a giveaway. I've got five lifetime pro licenses to their app to give away, and all you have to do to enter is again, go to the link in the description below, follow the instructions, and download the app. That's it. And everyone who downloads the app is going to get one month free of their pro membership to try it out. Thank you to Deplike for sponsoring this video. We love our sponsors here. They're what pays for these videos to bring them to you for free. So show them some love. Go check out the link in the description below this video. Download the app and try it out for free. You don't have to buy anything. And with doing that, you can enter to win. All right, back into the video. All right, so for the second exercise, first you're going to need to download a metronome app. So just on the Google or iPhone store, just search metronome and you'll find it. Or search metronome on Google and they've actually got a built-in one that's pretty easy to use. So basically you're going to want to set that to a slow speed around uh, 40 to 60 probably to start. So I'll try starting with 50 here. And then all that's going to do is give you a nice even beat. And I'm not sure how well you can see that screen on camera here, but basically it's just that consistent click here. So you're going to pick a nice and slow speed. I'm going to pick about 60 here, but you may have to go faster or slower depending on how fast you can change chords. Any speed is fine with whatever you're comfortable with here. So then all you're going to do is pick two chords. I'm going to use A minor and E minor, same with the chords as before, and we're going to switch every four beats. So every four clicks of the metronome, you're going to switch between the chord. And the biggest goal here is to switch on time. It does not matter if your chords are ugly sounding, if they're not that clean, that doesn't matter. They'll get better with time, but we're focusing on changing on rhythm. And so that's far more important. Our individually picked strings are where we work on our accuracy. And when we combine that from working off the metronome for our rhythm and speed, we bring those two together and that's how our chords end up sounding nice. So 
to demo it here so you can hear the rhythm. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So I'm just going to hold both chords for four beats before switching. So, one, two, three, four. 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 And the key here, again, is it doesn't matter how ugly these chords are. They'll probably be pretty ugly when you're switching them, but forcing your hand to switch in time is really going to help you. So even if it sounds like this. So right, so that's probably how it's going to sound the first few times you do this. That's totally fine. We're focusing on playing on time here, no matter how ugly these chords are. And I promise if you just do this for a little bit, then they're going to become a lot cleaner and nicer. And if you switch between this exercise and the individual picking, then it shouldn't take you too long to get these a lot smoother. <laughs> so I can't emphasize enough. Don't worry if they sound ugly or they probably are going to sound ugly. That's fine. But practice and repetition working on this for a few weeks is really going to help improve your chord changes. Last point here is you practice it for a bit and then it is going to start sounding nice and you're going to be able to play. It's going to start sounding a lot smoother. When you can do that, you know it's time to bump up the speed of the metronome. So then you can add 10 to where it is, wherever you started. So I was at 60 here. Now I'm going to go to 70. And you can see maybe the 70 on my little app there. And you can hear how it's a little faster. So basically there's the example and that's how you work up the speed of your chord changes. Work on it at a slow speed until it's comfortable and then once it's pretty decent, don't worry if it's perfect, but once it's decent, increase your speed and then you can gradually work up. Or you can also try this at a slow speed with some new chords like say C to G, which is a tricky one. You might want to start even slower for that one. But this is a great way to work on different chords. Okay, so once you've done these exercises for a few days or a week and they start to become smoother and easier, I recommend starting off and trying a song with these chords. Songs are the best way to learn guitar because songs are fun and that's probably why he started playing guitar in the first place, to play songs. So how I'd recommend structuring your practice is kind of play these exercises for 10 to 15 minutes and then try and work on a song for a little bit and then come back the next day and work on it and you'll gradually get better and use these exercises to learn the chords in the song. So say you're learning uh, from my Perfect Ed Sheeran tutorial that's got G, E minor, C, D. Well, you can do these exact same two exercises on those chords. So you could just do G, E minor, C, and D. And that sounds kind of cool just on its own. So you can try that and then work on the metronome changes, and that's a way you're gonna be able to play chord progressions that are in actual songs. And that's about all I have to say for this video. Hope this was a useful introduction to chords. Again, I try my best in these videos to include as many useful tips as possible, but there's only so much I can cover in you know, the five to 10 minutes that this video is. So I cover this all in a lot more detail with detailed explanations and daily practice routines in my course. You can check that out in the description below this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you like this. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button and say hi in the comments below. Let me know what you thought of this video. And make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell if you haven't already to get notified of all my newest uploads right when I post them so you can accelerate your guitar progress. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.